I'm here with a 2021 Tesla Model 3 and a 2019 Tesla Model 3. We're going to do a side-by-side -side comparison. Take a look at the changes Tesla made in 2021 when they refreshed the Model 3. Now, this Model 3 right here to my right is my new Model 3. Just took delivery of it a couple weeks ago. Those of you who follow this channel might remember I had a black 2019 Model 3. I sold that when I heard that Tesla was making these changes. Some of the things I really was interested in. I also wanted to be able to do some demonstration videos on the new product. And here it is, right after I got it, I wrapped it 3M satin gray, just to give it a little bit of a distinctive look. But we're gonna do this comparison right now, go over every little change that Tesla's made. Most of them, pretty much all of them, are improvements as far as I'm concerned. But first, don't forget, if you like what we're doing here on State of Charge, click that subscribe button and tap the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content. Let's take a look at the exterior changes first. Now, unfortunately, I couldn't get hold of a 2019 with the 18 inch aero cap wheels. My friend Pete Bremy lives nearby me, has a 2019, but it has the 19 inch sport wheels. So we can't do a comparison side by side, but I'll get some pictures and insert them into the video so you can see the changes. Now, the first change we'll talk about is the wheels. I had the 2019 uh, with the 18 inch aero cap wheels, the same as I got on my 2021. Tesla made some slight changes to both the wheels and the aero caps. The wheels underneath look almost exactly the same. However, they're slightly different and these aero cap wheels are much harder to get, take off. Matter of fact, when I was trying to take mine off, I thought I was gonna break it. I had to pull so hard. When I put them back on, I put a little grease on the inside of the wheel so that it slides and it sl does slide on a lot easier and comes off your side. I suggest if you get a 2021 with the aero cap wheels, the first time you take them off, be careful so you don't break them, but then put a little grease, little oil around the center ring so that when it pops in and out, it just goes a little bit easier. Now the aero cap wheels have a slightly cleaner look than what was on the previous aero cap. Matter of fact, I didn't like the, the, the previous versions of the aero cap wheels. When I had my 2019, I took them off my car immediately. I just didn't like how they looked. These, I like. Even though it's a minor difference, I think they look a lot cleaner and I'm gonna leave them on, it'll prove efficiency and protect my wheels underneath. Tesla removed all of the chrome. Well, they actually deleted it. They painted it black. Now this is a little controversial. There's some people that prefer the chrome trim. Some people don't. Uh, a lot of people did blackout on their existing chrome trim on their Model 3s. Tesla took that cue believe that most people prefer it this way. I happen to like it, some people don't, but there's no more chrome left on the Model 3. It's all black trim now. Next up on the frunk. The frunk is a little bit smaller now. Now that's to accommodate the heat pump system, which we'll get into later. This heat, heat pump system intruded a little bit into where the frunk was before, so Tesla had to make it slightly smaller. Another thing I noticed about the frunk is the, the, the hood actually closes easier. In past years, you really had to push down hard on the, the hood in order for it to latch. That's not the case anymore. You can easily do it with one hand. Now, I know people that have Model 3s that actually dented their hood, closing it, pressing down too hard. That shouldn't be necessary anymore. The hood actually closes a lot easier. The mechanism all looks the same, but Tesla tweaked it somehow so that now it actually latches easier. Now, Another feature that Tesla added was double pane laminated glass on the front windows. Now that's to reduce noise. Um, in previous years, Tesla just had the single pane glass and one of the uh, complaints Tesla owners, myself included, had was that the Model 3 was a little bit more noisy than many other electric vehicles. There was a lot of road noise at speed. When you got up over 60, 70 miles an hour, it actually was noisy for an electric car. Uh, quiet for a regular car, but noisy for an electric car. So Tesla added this double pane glass. Unfortunately for me, it doesn't seem to have made a difference. I just finished a 500 mile round trip to Vermont 
and on the highway, it quite honestly seemed as noisy as it ever was. It might have even seemed noisier. I think the seal on my driver's side front window isn't really seated correctly because I actually got a lot of wind noise through the top of the window. I'm going to have Tesla take a look at that, but for now, I don't think the double pane laminated glass really has done anything. I don't think it's really made an improvement. Um, what improvement that Tesla really made was the rear trunk weather stripping. Uh, in previous years, Tesla owners had complained that when they lifted their trunk up, water would roll off the trunk onto the back window and then roll down into the trunk. There's plenty of videos online you could see. This was a common problem. Tesla then changed the weather stripping a little bit, I think about a year ago. It kind of helped, but for 2021, they completely redesigned the gasket, and now I think it's gonna eliminate the problem completely. Good move on that Tesla. Another thing with the trunk is now it is power operated. One press to open it, it lifts up by itself. One press and it lowers. You can even adjust the height by setting it to the height that you want and then pressing and holding the button. The trunk will then uh, limit its opening to that height. Say if you're in a garage or an area that has a low overhead, you don't want it to go all the way up because it might hit. You can set the trunk so that it won't go any higher than where you set. Now, one of the things I noticed with this new power trunk, on my car at least, is, and I promise I'm not gonna really harp on panel gaps, but uh, the, the trunk deck lid now has a very uneven gap. And I thought it might be specific to my new Model 3. However, I looked at a friend's who just got his, and he has the same problem. And there's also a YouTube uh, video that I was just watching this morning of a person who was complaining about the exact same thing. I think with how they redesigned the trunk to have the, uh, the, the different lifts, the power lifts, it somehow threw off the manufacturing. It's probably something Tesla will work on and improve, but these early 2021 models, from what I can tell, pretty much all of them have very uneven panel gaps when it comes to the rear trunk. Um, and I think that's something that people are gonna have to live with. I'm gonna ask Tesla to see if they can adjust it. I'll report back if they do. The last thing on the exterior is the headlights. Now, if you take a good look at my headlights, you'll notice there's no change. Well, that's true. I didn't get the new upgraded headlights. So far, we've only seen them in Europe and Asia, but Tesla says that by early 2021, all of the Model 3 shipping will have these new headlights. Unfortunately, can't show them here because I'm one of the early, uh, <laughs> the early people that got the 2021 model and Tesla hasn't switched over to them yet in the US. We're only seeing them show up in Europe and Asia. Another thing I noticed with the cars side by side is the 2021 Model 3's trunk lid didn't appear to open up quite as high as the 2019's. So I took out a tape measure and sure enough, it does not. I made sure the trunk lid was at its maximum height and from the ground up, the 2021 measured 73 and a half inches. I went over to the 2019, it was 76 and a half inches. I suppose because of the new automatic opening feature, the Model 3's trunk lids maximum opening is now three inches lower than previous years. Next up, let's take a look at the interior where there's a little bit more changes. First off, you can't help but notice the center console redesign. Tesla redesigned the entire center console. Gone is the shiny piano black surface uh, that the center console was made of. There were too many people complaining that it scratched, that it got fingerprints. So many people wrapped it with a matte finish that Tesla said, you know what, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna just give it a matte finish so people stop complaining. Um, you know, there's also two uh, wireless phone charging pads. Tesla didn't include them in the Model 3 before this. Now they're standard. There's also a nice uh, vegan leather or faux leather side strips with um, accented striping, uh, the, the stitching that you can see. It actually looks really nice and it gives the center console a nice soft touch. Uh, the only thing that I will complain a little bit about is uh, when you lift up the armrest, 
the, tr the removable tray is no longer there. Tesla stopped including that. Uh, in all previous years, you had a nice little removable tray that you could put your wallet in or coins or whatever, and then you'd lift it out and there'd be the deeper compartment. Now, when you lift up the armrest, all you see is that deeper compartment. There are two USB-C ports uh, underneath the, uh, the, the front storage compartment that slides open. You push it all the way to the front and then to close it, you don't have to pull it back. You just push it again and it closes by itself. Now there's two USB-C ports in there. Previously, there were, there were two USB-A ports that were underneath where the, uh, the phone charger is now. And you needed to use one of them for your uh, USB drive for your Tesla cam or sentry mode. You no longer need to do that. Tesla now includes uh, the drive that's pre-formatted and now it's in the glove box. There's no other changes in the glove box except for the fact that now that's the, uh, the USB port is included in there. A little bit better for safety and security. If someone breaks into your car, they'd have to pry open the uh, glove box in order to get that out. Some savvy thieves realized that, hey, this was all being recorded. So if I broke into the car, they would lift up the center console and pull the USB drive out. Now they have to pry open the glove box if they want to get that out of there. I mean, they, they obviously can, but you know, when you break into a car, you want to get in and out of there as quickly as possible. I don't know if you want to waste all that time prying open a glove box. So chances are new Model 3 owners will have that much needed Sentry Cam recording to identify whoever just broke into their car. The 2021 Model 3 now has two USB-C ports for the rear passengers. Previous years, it was two USB-A ports. The steering wheel now has metal rings around the scroll wheels. They have a more pronounced edge for better grip. I like the way this feels in my hand. I can definitely tell that I'm scrolling up and down and that my finger isn't just sliding over it like it previously felt with the all plastic scroll wheels in previous model years. The Model 3 now also has graphite rings around the power seat controls. Looks a little bit better, but there's real no functional difference than the all plastic buttons that were in previous model years. Here's a nice improvement. The Model 3 now has, borrowed from the Model Y, the magnetic sun visor clip. It works really well and it replaces the cheap and flimsy sun visor clip that used to break frequently in previous years. Mine broke and I know quite a few other owners who had their sun visor clip break as well. Tesla also improved the graphic on the door release buttons, and now it looks like it should open the door. Previous years, there was just a line on this button, and people that were new to the car didn't know what it was for. They'd often reach the manual release and use that, which you're not supposed to. This might be a small, but it's definitely a welcome improvement. The door sills are now black plastic, replacing the chrome sills used in previous years and continue the chrome delete theme. The next feature is one that we don't get to use just yet, but it's coming. And that's a heated steering wheel. When you ask the car to turn on the heated steering wheel, it replies, failed to turn on steering wheel heater, which indicates it has a heated steering wheel, it just can't turn it on yet. Um, really looking forward to this. Tesla has never offered a heated steering wheel in the Model 3 just yet. And here in northern New Jersey, it gets cold in the winter, and I really appreciate a heated steering wheel. I hope to get that in an update sometime soon before the spring so I can test it out while it's still cold. I'll finish up talking about some of the changes that I can't demonstrate in the video. First off is the heat pump. I talked a little earlier about this and the fact that the frunk is now slightly smaller because the heat pump system intruded into the area where the frunk was. Now that the Model 3 has a heat pump system borrowed from the Model Y, the frunk's a little bit smaller. Uh, this is one of the areas that Tesla has been behind the competition by not offering heat pump systems. That seems to have changed now. Heat pump systems are much more efficient efficient than the resistive heating systems found in electric vehicles that don't employ a heat pump system. Basically, the heat pump systems work like an air conditioner in reverse. They're much more efficient. 
and if less energy is used to heat the battery pack in the cabin, that energy is then left over for propulsion, which extends the range of your electric vehicle. You want as much as of your energy that the battery pack holds to be used for propulsion to have longer range and less of it used on things like heating and uh, maybe the, the, the stereo systems and uh, defoggers and the lights, anything else that draws energy, you want those things to be as efficient as possible. So as much energy in your battery pack goes to your propulsion system as possible, thus giving you longer range. The 2021 Model 3 also has improved battery technology. Now they're the same form, the 2170 cells as Tesla has always used in the Model 3, but they're slightly improved, more energy dense. So it allows the same physical size battery pack to now have a total capacity of 82 kilowatt hour. Previous year Model 3s had a total pack capacity of 78 kilowatt hour. So that's a nice, jump up four extra kilowatt hour with the same size pack. Now, just to be clear, we're not talking about the new battery cells that Tesla introduced at battery day, the 4680 cells. Those cells are completely different. They're not available yet. And that's not why the Model 3 now has a larger capacity battery pack. It's the same cells, the 2170s, just improved. Which brings us to one of the most important upgrades that Tesla made for the 2021 Model 3, the range. The dual motor long range Model 3 that I got is EPA range rated at 353 miles per charge. That's 31 more miles than the 2020 Model 3 with the same trim was rated at. Now, this isn't just because of the larger battery pack. The new Model 3 has four kilowatt hour more total capacity in the battery pack, but that would only account for maybe somewhere between 16 and 18 more miles. Where did all the other miles come from? Well, it's a combination of the more efficient heating system that the heat pump now has. Uh, also, the aero wheel covers are probably slightly uh, more efficient. They have less drag and Tesla constantly upgrades their software to make the cars more efficient. It's one of the things that Tesla does so well. The 2021 dual motor long range Model 3 now only needs 25 kilowatt hour to drive 100 miles. That's a 10% improvement over last year's vehicle, which needed 28 kilowatt hour to go the same distance. Even last year's Model 3 was one of the most efficient electric vehicles available today. And this year with it being so efficient that it only needs 25 kilowatt hour, it actually ties the Hyundai Ioniq for being the most efficient electric vehicle available in America in 2021. And the amazing thing about that is the Ioniq, while it's a great car, I had the opportunity to drive one. It's just kind of a family mover, hatchback, nothing really special. It's not particularly powerful or fast. It does what it was designed to do very well, and it's extremely efficient. But the Model 3 is a high-performance sports sedan uh, where you get the best of both worlds. You get this incredible amount of power, 0 to 60 in 4.1 seconds, and you also get the best fuel economy. That's like, you know, having a... Uh, you know, a high performance Corvette uh, that gets Prius gas mileage. It just doesn't happen with gas. But with electric vehicles, you can have your cake and eat it too. So there you have it. 25 changes that the 2021 Tesla Model 3 has as compared to the previous year's model. The Tesla Model 3 just keeps getting better. And Tesla has actually lowered the price of the Model 3. So you get a better car and you actually pay less. It's one of the reasons why I think the Tesla Model 3 is the best sports sedan available today, bar none.